Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about lumbar radiculopathy and more specifically radiculopathy due to lumbar disc herniation. So radiculopathy essentially means presence of pain, numbness, or weakness in the distribution of a lumbar nerve. Uh, most commonly, this is caused by disc herniation. That's what we're going to talk about today. Usually, it's uh, present in patients younger than the age of 50, but occasionally we do see it in the older patients as well. Now, this may or may not be associated with an inciting event. Now, often, we'll get the story that a patient was lifting something heavy or, or caused or did a twisting type of movement that caused this pain. Uh, but there are times when we don't have any such history and the patients will just say that the pain started uh, all of a sudden. Uh, most commonly, this happens at the L5-S1 level and then at the L4, L5 level. These two levels make up for more than 90% of uh the segments where radiculopathy happens due to a disc herniation. Uh, what else can cause lumbar radiculopathy? Well, anything that pushes on a nerve in the lumbar spine can cause symptoms of radiculopathy. This can be from a disc herniation, which is what we're talking about today. It, com it can be from a facet cyst uh, that, that arises from uh, the lumbar facets and pushes on the nerves. Uh, it can be due to just degenerative stenosis uh, or from scoliosis due to foraminal stenosis. Uh, other causes of radiculopathy uh, include trauma, tumor, infection. Uh, for patients who have had prior surgery, radiculopathy can be caused if a screw uh, is touching a nerve, if, the, uh, if a cage has migrated and is pushing on a nerve now, uh, from bone graft pushing on the nerve, from other uh, material that we use during surgery that can be irritating the nerve. So there are many different causes of having radiculopathy. And importantly, you know, we have to make sure that this is not caused from a problem outside of the spine because symptoms of hip pathology or SI joint pain or nerve compression outside of the spine, such as piriformis syndrome, can sometimes cause symptoms that mimic lumbar radiculopathy. Uh, for patients who have disc herniation, uh, their pain will often start with severe back pain and then gradually over the course of the day next few days it localizes to leg pain uh, they can uh, report this as pain uh, uh, of a burning nature it can be numbness it can be weakness as well uh, usually the pain is worse with sitting and is less with standing so you'll see these patients come to the clinic and often try to stand up completely straight because when they do that they are trying to take pressure off their discs. And, and it's not uncommon that they find it difficult to find a comfortable position. Uh, if this is from a disc herniation, often the pain is going to be worse with sitting, walking, standing, coughing, sneezing, essentially anything that causes more pressure on the disc because as there's more pressure on the disc, uh, it pushes back a little and touches the nerve which causes more pain. Uh, typical distribution varies on the level that the pain is coming from. And I'm going to use this figure to, to show that patients who have pain in the L1 distribution will often have pain more in the anterior and medial part of the thigh, higher up in the thigh. Uh, they may have a bit of groin pain as well. Patients who have pain in the L2 distribution will also have pain in the anterior and medial part of the thigh, uh, but more so in the middle of the thigh. Patients with pain in the L3 distribution will, will get pain in the anterior and medial part of the thigh, kind of going towards the medial part of the knee, but not crossing the knee. And often these patients can have groin pain as well. So this was L3. Uh, for L4, uh, again, they can have pain in the anterior and medial aspect of the thigh, and it sometimes does cross the knee more towards the medial aspect of the calf, even towards the ankle, but usually it doesn't go beyond the ankle. And L4 as well can cause some groin pain. L5 is a very common one that we see. Usually it'll start off at pain in the, in the buttocks, as well as pain kind of on the posterior and lateral aspect of the thigh, radiating towards the calf and in the, in the outer part of the calf and towards then the dorsum or the top of the foot. This would be L5. And then finally, S1 can also start as pain in the buttock 
and then more so pain in the posterior part of the thigh, posterior part of the calf, uh, going towards the bottom of the foot, but also towards the outer aspect of the foot. So this is S1. So again, it depends on the nerve that's being compressed.